There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello. There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello. <laughs> hello and welcome to my channel. Uh, this little elegant intro was supposed to demonstrate what a mountain of a video this is going to be because we're going to go through a hundred, yes, one hundred self-portrait ideas that you can do at home. As you know, I love to take photos outdoors, but that's not always possible and Right at this moment, that might not be an option, so that's why I gathered a hundred self-portrait ideas that you can do at home, in the comfort of in your own space, or by yourself. Um, and without further ado, let's jump right into it. Oh! Alright, I'm not gonna hold back at all for this video, we're going straight into the deep end. Vingardium Leviosa, levitating photos that you can do at home. Besides, you're saying it wrong. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. These are really fun to do. They do require a little bit of core strength because you have to pose yourself on some chairs and then in Photoshop you just take out the chairs or if you want to have levitating objects in the air. It's so much fun to create these and if you just look for Photoshop tutorials um, you'll find a bunch and trust me it's not at all as difficult as it seems at first. You could do some stay home inspired photos. I've done, for example, a blanket fort, then I used books, turned myself into a house with a chimney. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. And then this last one is an older one that I took before we moved to London, um, sort of depicting what I hoped was gonna be my dream home in the future. A lot of people have really jumped on the baking train while they've been at home. I also did that, I baked banana breads for like a few weeks just non-stop um, and it was really yummy. I haven't done it for a while, I should do it again. Anyways, baking um, is such a nice skill to have and it's also pretty visual so you could do some fun ideas with that. I'm not like an excellent baker but um, if I can do a fun photo with it then that would definitely motivate me more to bake and make some pancakes and then you'll just have some very yummy snacks afterwards as a reward. A fun idea to try out is to make yourself blurry in the photo so that you're actually not in focus. I think this is quite artistic and somehow feels pretty sophisticated um, and also makes you a bit mysterious in the whole photo. Oh, next up, making a whimsical scene from above. This is one of my favorite category and I've done a bunch of these type of photos. So basically you just put your camera up above and create a whimsical scene and whatever you can imagine because you really don't have any restrictions of gravity and yeah the more playful you can be with it and just gather a grab gather a grab <laughs> gather a bunch of textiles and props or fruits or whatever you need to create your whimsical scene and capture that so either if you have somebody helping you up on a ladder or then you can just place your phone up in the ceiling or then you can make a uh, top-down crane by yourself. I have a video with that, so I'll link that up here. On sunny days, you can capture patterns that the shadows and the sun make. Um, this is a fun also activity to just have while you're at home, observing light and using that in a photo. You have to be a little bit quick because light changes so quickly, but you can get some really striking self-portraits using this. And when it gets a bit darker, you can put fairy lights in a cup or just in your blanket fort if you chose to make that. And just think of ways where you could add a little bit of magic with those fairy lights. I think without using any Photoshop, that's a really powerful way to create a little bit of sense of magical, sense of magic. Use windows and doorways to add subframing to your self-portrait. This is a great way to add some structure and also help guide the viewer's attention to your subject. And depending on what type of windows you have, you can go creative with it if you're just gonna take it from straight forward or maybe at an angle, or you could even stand in a doorway or even be outside of your house and take a photo, maybe on your yard or just of your front door. Next up, flower power. So keeping in tune with my embroidery on my shirt and kind of this 70s vibe I have going on, flowers are a great way to add some vibrancy and color to your photos, especially if you live at a place where you just don't think you have so nice backgrounds and nothing nice to shoot up against, getting some flowers. And again, there's a bunch of creative ways you could use them and put them in your sleeves or put them in your boots um, and they will just immediately bring some color to your photos. Paint the town red. One of my favorite things recently has been to explore how I could use paint and paint on my own body or just pretend that I'm painting a wall. 
it's again a really fun way and creative expression to add a little bit of imagination and some unexpectedness to your self-portrait. Now, just because we can't go to party together, you could still throw a little party shoot indoors and get inspired by some party hats or confetti or just dressing up all by yourself and taking a photo and posting that online and having sort of a virtual party by yourself. Stick your nose in a book. Books are a great way to spend time when you're by yourself and spending time indoors. And I really like the aesthetic of books and how they look in a photo. So using those, uh, again, a very cheap and affordable way to use what you already have available at home for some creative self-portraits. And a classic, mirror, mirror on the wall. If you have a small space, taking a selfie or taking a self-portrait through a mirror is a really good way of making the space actually look bigger. And again, here comes down to the details of having to style it up and what angles you choose to shoot from. But this one is just always such a go-to photo idea when you don't really have anything that you feel like shooting. Now, you know, I really like to dress up. And if you have fancy dresses, why keep them in the closet? Take them out instead, get dolled up and uh, or, you know, use a fruit to make an outfit for yourself. Fun ideas to just get dressed up and get out of that mundane slump of maybe you've been in tights, you know, the last month. Um, so a photo is a great excuse to get dressed up a little bit. And for some click action, if you have a vintage camera, take a photo with that. I always think there is something really mysterious and fascinating about showing yourself behind the camera and with the camera. There is just something that tells a story of somebody observing the world behind the lens. Use cozy textiles to add that really cozy feeling in your self-portraits. If you're a knitter or if you do some craft projects, then take a self-portrait with that, using that as a prop and you get to show off your skills a little bit as well. It's true, I will never get tired of a good coffee cup photo and I've done, even done a whole video with just coffee cup ideas, photo ideas. Um, and it's again one of those go-to things if you don't really feel like oh, anything is working and you don't feel so motivated, uh, grabbing your favorite cup and posing with that or you could put some flowers in it or just be creative with it. But it's just a very simple starting point and not so overwhelming and then you can just take it from there. If you have a nice looking bathroom, you could do some photos in there and think of creative ways of using that space that normally isn't probably shown in photos. Or if you don't have that, you could just go to the children's store and grab some soap bubbles to get that playful vibe anyways. All right, that was it, 100 self-portrait ideas. I hope you got some ideas. I keep saying ideas so many times in this video. I hope you got some inspiration or it sparked some visions for you <laughs> for photos to take. Um, obviously, you don't have to copy or imitate exactly any of these, even though if you do, um, I don't really mind because I think imitating is one of the best ways that you learn and you find your own uh, style and just artistic expression. Why do I keep doing like this? Um, but if you do post them on Instagram and if you do some self-portraits, then please tag me and come and say hi. I'm over at Kutavakika on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're staying safe and healthy and that you have a lovely evening and I will see you here back soon. Bye. Hello. There's a bee in my bonnet. Hello, hello. A bee in my bonnet. Hello. I think that you're smashing from head to toe. I'm telling you this just so that you know. If I am the raven, will you be my crow? A bee in my bonnet. Hello. There's a bee in my bonnet. Hello, hello. A bee in my bonnet. Hello. There's a bee in my bonnet. Hello, hello. A bee in my bonnet. Hello. It's my cheese and I'll be the biscuit. The lock you gave me last night, how I kissed it. I hope you don't mind, but I thought that I'd risk it. A bee in my bonnet. Hello. There's a bee in my bonnet. Hello. Hello. There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello. There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello. There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello.